Good morning, good morning, good morning, hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to do a Bible study today. Some things that I've been studying and learning and I was gonna share that with you. And um, I just wanna say good morning and thank you for joining. I know some, many may be already at work. Um, however, uh, we're gonna go ahead and dig into the Word of God for those of you that are available and are willing to um, do a Bible study this morning uh, with us. Um, so we now are going to go ahead and um, dig in. So Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just want to thank you so very much for the power of your word and the power of your name, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the study of your word that we can get to know you greater and greater, Lord. Help us to soften our hearts uh, toward you and toward one another. Help us to have a love and a desire for your word, Lord. You said... Um, that blessed is the man that hungers and thirsts for righteousness, Lord. And Father, we just want to hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Teach us and lead us and guide us, Father God, through the power of your name, through the power of your word, Lord. And we just praise your holy name right now. We just bless you. We bless you, Father. We just say thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. So today's study is um, coming out of, uh, the main verse is coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And so this verse right here, he's saying, But this treasure we have in earthen vessels. What is this treasure, beloved? So we're going to go to John chapter 14 really quick and read uh, six, verse 16 and 17. John chapter 14, excuse me, verses uh, 16 and 17. Uh, and it reads, uh, well, it, it actually go to John chapter 1. I'm going to start out there and then I'll go to John chapter 17. I mean, yeah, John chapter 14. In John chapter 1, um, the Gospel of John chapter 1, he says, um, And the Word was made flesh. No, back up to verse 12. So it's John 1, 12. He says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So this whole journey and walk with the Lord is walking in the power of God to become the sons of God. Wait, wait a minute. Say that again. He says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So beloved, um, we are given power um, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, God gives us power to become the sons of God. Um, so we don't automatically, the minute we accept Christ, we don't automatically think like Christ, walk like Christ, talk like Christ, correct? So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So when he says we've been given power to become the sons of God, this means that um, uh, as, as, as we walk in the word of God, we are given power to receive and become the sons of God, um, even to them that were believe on his name. And now when you go to John chapter 8, and uh, good morning, beloved. Thank you for joining. It's John chapter 8. Jesus says to the Jews in John chapter 8, verse 31, he said, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, said, we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in any bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. Now he's talking about, right here, he's talking about that the servant of sin does not abide in the house forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Um, he's talking about this, the servant of sin 
will not abide in the house forever. And so um, we're trying to abide in the house forever. Hallelujah. We are, as John chapter 1 verse 12 says, that we are becoming, he said, that, um, that those that would believe on him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So we're given power to become the son of God. And so the son of God is the one that abides in the house forever. Not the servant of sin, beloved. It's the son that abides in the house forever. And so <clears throat> Jesus would not tell us to stop sinning if indeed, beloved, he hadn't already given us the power to stop sinning. Hallelujah. And so here he's saying, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So he's saying continuing in the word will cause you to know the truth and then that truth will thereby make you free. Free from what, beloved? Free from sin in our past, sin in our present, and sin, beloved, in the future. And, and, and I've discussed before that sin in our future looks like how the Holy Spirit will keep us from sinning in the future. So he also keeps us, uh, he, 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 um, forgive, he forgave us of all of our sin, past, present, and future. Okay. But right here, he's saying, if you continue in his word, then you will be made free. We're not just talking about set free as far as like somebody being, um, 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 set free from um, oppression of the devil, meaning a bondage and addiction or something like that. And that, that very well, I mean, right there at the point of accepting Christ, I, I, myself personally, there was a lot of things that God delivered me from. But what he's talking about right here is be made free from sin because he says in verse 34, Whoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Then he says, but the servant of sin doesn't abide in the house forever. Only the son does. So beloved, this process that we're walking through, this process of faith, and what we're going to talk about today is how the Holy Spirit helps us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And so what he's saying here is the servant abides not in the house, but the son abides forever. Hallelujah. The servant abides forever and uh, I mean the son abides forever. And even Jesus, he goes on down and telling the disciples, I no longer call you servant, but I call you my ears of God. That's what he calls you and I is sons and daughters of God. And so we we are on a journey to sin less and less and less. Isn't that awesome that I don't have to be bound to sin. I don't have to always be thinking, well, I'll never be able to do good. I'll never. No, if you allow the Holy Spirit to work this out in you, you, beloved, can become to a place in your walk where you're sinning less and less and less. And sin is no more an issue of something that you're wrestling with. Even the Apostle Paul said, let us go on to, he said, um, he said, I, 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 w I want to talk to you as spiritual. I want to talk to you as mature. He said, but um, he said uh, that we need to leave the 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 um, beggarly elements of of um, touch not, taste not, you know, the things that are that are binding us down because of sin. Uh, it's like we're trying to do the law, and we're not really accepting in Christ what it is that God has already done for us. He's already given us victory over death, hell, and the grave. He's already given us victory over sin. He's already given us the victory over um, uh, all of the power of the devil. He, he even told the disciples, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon uh, all the fiery darts of the enemy. So we, we have the power in us, he said in John chapter 1, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. So this process, this journey is becoming the sons of God. Hallelujah. So you're on a journey and I'm on a journey to becoming the sons and daughters of God. 
And so that is, this is a process, beloved. It is so that we can abide in the house forever. Hallelujah. And so he says in 2 Corinthians, I mean, I'm going to go to John chapter 14 now because he says that he didn't leave us here alone. He's going to prepare a place for us. And then, uh, uh, so John chapter 14, verse 16, he says in verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So he gives us, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he goes and he says, and I will pray to the father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he sees him, it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. So right here is the promise of the Holy Spirit given um, uh, through accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we, uh, he says, so back up, 2 Corinthians, he said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This treasure, beloved, is the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. If you go to uh, Acts uh, chapter, let's see, Acts chapter uh, 1, 2, even in the even in the ends of the Gospels, uh, I was trying to. I'm sorry. Uh, the 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 people said, uh, "What what should we do?" And uh, the disciples said, uh, "Repent and um, uh, repent and and be baptized and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior." And so um, and and so uh, and he said, "And you will receive the Holy Spirit." So this is what we, as the body of Christ, this is this is the whole purpose of salvation is to receive the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit can live in us and through us. And um, but when we start, not but, and when we start our journey off with the Lord, um, we are given a choice of whether or not we number one want to receive the Holy Spirit, we want to receive Christ. And that if we're going to obey his commandments. And so um, it's a process and, 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 and it's not always going to be easy and you're not always going to feel like obeying. But guess what? When we take a step of faith, beloved, and allow God to work that out and say, Lord, work this out in me. Work out your salvation in me. The Bible says uh, we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The working out of my salvation is I read the word. The Holy Spirit shows me an area that I'm lacking or that I need uh, work on. And then I pray to him. So there's a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Then I pray to him and ask him to help me. I pray that out. That's a working out. And then as the Holy Spirit begins to help me, begins to show me, I begin to work that out between me and God. And that's how this whole process is, beloved. It's a process, a step of faith that says, God, I'm, I, I, I want to do your will. I want to I stop sinning against you. I need your help. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And beloved, it's so beautiful when we, you know, we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, in our lives. And so, and so anyway, it says in 2 Corinthians, I want to go to 2 Corinthians really quick. Uh, we have two scriptures coming out of that, uh, out of this Bible study. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 4, uh, 4, 7, we already read, but and it, said, and it reads, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And so the whole focus of this verse and where we're going in this verse in this study is that um, the overthrow of the power of God in our lives to overthrow um, the devil, to overthrow um, uh, uh, the, the strongholds in our life may be of God and not of us. Meaning as, as we're sharing the gospel, we're not exerting ourselves. We're not exerting our own righteousness, but w the power of God is flowing through us to, to help us to minister the gospel to the people. Hallelujah. Um, so many times as ministers, we can get caught up in, in a, um, 
uh, a feeling of uh, inadequacy. Uh, sometimes when people aren't receiving the gospel or they're not obeying the gospel, we can get frustrated in the process of preaching the gospel and we can begin to take on a, a, a whole different mindset of self-righteousness. And so the Apostle Paul is saying that this treasure, the Holy Spirit that we have, um, it, we have this in our earthen vessels, but he says that the excellency of the power, the overthrow, the overstep of the power to help us to overcome in our life is of God and not of us, meaning we're not trying to uh, situate ourselves and, and exert our own influence and our own power, but that the power that we're operating in is flow is uh, the Holy Spirit is flowing through us, uh, uh, Amen. And so I, I hope that you're uh, understanding what I'm trying to say here. Sometimes I can see it in my spirit, but the communication some, uh, somehow, you know, sometimes. And so, anyhow. Uh, so anyway, so he is so in Second Corinthians chapter five, he says, Second uh, Corinthians chapter five. I just passed it up. He says uh, in verse five. Uh, now he that has wrought us for for he that has wrought us for the self same self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore. So he's talking about we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit, okay? God has, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, God has given us uh, the deposit of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then he says, therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith and not by sight. He's talking about being in the actual presence of the Lord in heaven. Then he says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, he's saying, because of this, we labor that where, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So our laboring is that we are studying to show ourselves approved, um, that we are uh, uh, so desirous to do his will, um, that, that we are, uh, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that all these things will be added. So he says, wherefore we labor. Then he says, we, for, for, because of this, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Then he says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, he's talking about the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are, but we persuade men. He said, but we are made manifest unto God. I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. See, he's talking about here um, that that our persuasion as a minister of the gospel, by persuasion, well, what he's saying in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, that my persuasion, that the overthrow of the enemy might be of God and not of myself. Because, you know, you, you think about what Christ said. What did he say? He said, on that day, they will say, well, we cast out devils in your name. We did these things in your name. We did this. We did this. We did this. Well, how in the world can we exert power and it not even be of God? Because his name is power. And because we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, we have influence, beloved, and we can actually use that influence as a minister of the gospel. Um, the Bible says in um, uh, Jeremiah 23, and I want you to go there. Just turn your Bible to Jeremiah 23. This is a very powerful verse, and this verse has been in my spirit for the last couple of days because I've studied this before, and I've read all of this, and I know this, but I believe what the Lord is doing is getting ready to help us to understand uh, to a greater degree, to help us to be better communicators and more effective ministers of the gospel. And, um, and, th and that is his will and his desire. I know it's your will, uh, beloved. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, brother. Glory to be to God. 
Um, I know that it is his will that I uh, uh, prosper in the gospel and that I bear fruit. And I know it's his will for you. And I know that both you and I want and desire to bear fruit in the gospel and do it according to his works and his word. And so in um, Jeremiah chapter 23, sorry, I'm still moving along there. Um, he says um, in Jeremiah 23... He's talking about, uh, I'm just going to kind of go down through here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but do please go back and read the whole thing. He talks about in 23, Jeremiah 23, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my flock, of my pasture. And then he goes on down. He's talking to the pastors. And he said that, um, verse 2, You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Then he goes on down and he says, I'm going to gather the remnant and I will bring them again into their folds. And then he said, I will, in verse four, I'll set up shepherds over them that will actually feed them. See, I, I was talking to another brother the other day and, you know, he said, you know, there's a lot of churches preaching, beloved, they're preaching, um, uh, deliverance, they're preaching prosperity and all of these things, and they're preaching all of this, but no one's bearing any fruit. Nobody's actually walking in any of it. So um, that's why the Apostle Paul said the true sign of a minister of the gospel is that we're walking in that fruit. You know, he said, Jesus said, I send you out or, or I ordain you. And he said, he said, I, um, I, or, uh, I send you out. And he said, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. You will cast out devils. You will do all these things in my name. And then Paul says, the true sign of a true minister of the gospel is that these signs follow them like what Jesus said. And these signs will follow you. You will speak with new tongues. You will cast out devils. You will do all of these things. And so right here, when, when he's saying in Jeremiah chapter 23... Um, he said that, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. See, these signs following is also feeding the flock. Because the thing is, if there's no fruit coming out of the preaching of the gospel in the people's lives, that they're being healed, they're being delivered, they're being set free. If there's no fruit, then we need to go back to the so-called drawing board or the notepad of our life and say, God, where am I messing up at? Because, you know, when God called me, he said, daughter, um, you can go and build your own ministry or you can follow me and go in power. Well, of course, why would anyone else want to go in their own power? And so um, that's what he's saying in 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure, treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Well, you said, how could the power be of us? Well, and that's what we're talking about. We have an influence because we've received Christ and we can try within ourselves to exert influence on somebody, but it be outside of God. It will be outside of the Holy Ghost. And so what God is saying here in Jeremiah chapter 23, uh, and we already read down, uh, he said, and I will set up shepherds over them, which will feed them. So, uh, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. And then in verse five, he says, behold, the days come that he's going to say, he says, I'm going to send a righteous branch. This is Jesus Christ. And he will execute judgment and justice in the earth. And so, and even in the new Testament, Jesus says, um, Jesus said that he, that he's coming back and, 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 uh, that, no, that, um, his coming uh, it, basically he's bringing judgment back into righteousness. And this is exactly what he's talking about. So it's about true judgment. Not, not that we're bro uh, judging our brothers and sisters um, to condemn them to hell, but we are uh, making true judgment of right and wrong. And the only way you can truly judge between right and wrong is, the Bible says, for the word is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide asunder between bone and marrow, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. See, true judgment is discernment coming from the word of God. You know, you hear people in the church always say, don't judge, and God doesn't want us to judge. And, and, and But Jesus said, 
he said, uh, he said, uh, for whatever measure you judge that you will be judged. And so then he goes on to say, um, first he said, when you judge, listen, when you judge, he said, first, hallelujah, cast out the beam out of, uh, the, your eye, uh, so that you are the moat out of your eye or the beam out of your eye. And then the moat out of your brother's eye. See, he didn't say don't judge. He just said, and even the apostle Paul said, you who are preaching against stealing, are you robbing temples? You who are preaching against this, are you doing the same? So he's saying, whatever measurement you're judging, that you will be judged by. So I cannot come to you and preach about right ministry unless the Lord had already been dealing with me about right ministry. And that's where he goes into, whoo, this is so awesome because um, he talks about, hallelujah, um, uh, that we should be an example, okay? And I'm trying to look for that actual verse. I think I'm going to have to read it. No, he said, he said in First Peter 5, 1 through 4, and I'm just reading verse 3, he says, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being example to the flock. So this is why as ministers of the gospel, we're called to be sanctified so that we can be an example to the flock. I don't know about you, but I really don't care about anyone getting up preaching to me unless they are walking through it themselves, unless they are absolutely um, engaging in the word of God themselves. So when he's talking about in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It's because you are allowing the word of God to come to you first. You're working out your salvation and then it can come through you. Meaning you are being that example and you were able to actually lead someone out of bondage because you have come out of bondage yourself. We can't lead anybody if we're not being led ourselves. And so when he says that the power of the excellency may be of God and not of us, you know, uh, there was someone who came into my life at one point, they were ministers. And um, they had a great deliverance and everything, but there was a spirit of mockery working in their life. And I began to ask, the, ask God, how could this be? And he said, because they had been sitting under a ministry that was mocking God and that was um, that they had allowed them to be in this ministry position before they ever got born again. So that right there brought in the spirit of mockery, number one. And I said, well, how could this person be delivered under this ministry that is operating in a spirit of mockery? And he said, daughter, don't you remember? He said, I said on that day, I will say to them, they will say to me, but we cast out devils in your name. We did, I did this and I did that. And I, 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 and he said, I never knew you, beloved this is how come, and I never thought I'd see the day that I actually experienced to see someone who had come out from an, uh, a ministry that if they don't get their life together on judgment day, he's going to say, I never knew you. And he said, they will cast out devils in his name. Just because we cast out devils, that doesn't mean, uh, beloved, that we are in right standing with God. That means we're exerting our power, our influence in what God has given us over and through the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is power in itself. I mean, that name is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. But we can actually operate in the ministry in our own power, in our own strength, and not in the excellency of God's power. Because when God's power comes, beloved, it heals, it delivers, it sets free, and it's for eternity. It's not this up and down, constantly wavering up and down. Yes, for a minute they may waver, the sheep may waver, just because they're trying to get a firm footing on the rock of Christ. But 
uh, eventually that word is good. He said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It's the truth. And he said, continuing in it. And then he said for the, uh, in John chapter eight, he says for the, ser uh, for he who continues in sin is a servant of sin. And Jesus would not tell me to stop sinning if he had not already given me the power to do it. As he said in John chapter one to them, um, who received him, <laughs> hallelujah, uh, to them that received Christ, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So we've been given power to become the sons of God. Get it to become? We don't automatically look like, walk like, talk like. So we've been given power to become the sons of God. And then Jesus said, continue in my word and you won't be a servant to sin anymore. And then he said, because a servant to sin does not abide in the house forever. So we want to abide in the house forever. He said, but the son does. Hallelujah. So we, me and you are becoming sons and daughters of the most high God. Okay, moving on. So he says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship, beloved. Hallelujah. And, and, and so he said, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good work. So I want to go to um, Ephesians chapter 5 really quick. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. You know, beloved, you can hear me speaking this word, but um, it's different when you read it, when you see it for yourself. So um, just don't just take my word for it. Go there and, and look it up and, and, and hallelujah. Get the Bible says above all, get understanding. Uh, so he says here in Ephesians, uh, I mean, uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse two, hold on verse two, uh, uh verse Ephesians chapter five, verse 25. I'm sorry. I'm looking at, uh, am I in chapter five? No, I'm not. Hold on just a second. Chapter five, 25. He says, uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So God is paralleling and comparing husbands and wives. And then he says, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So thank you, Father, for uh, revelation of your word. He says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word of God. So first of all, God is comparing um, uh, the, uh, the husband wife relationship with Christ and his church. And then he says, so he gave himself for the church. And then he says, uh, for what purpose that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word of God, that he might present it to his own self. Hallelujah. This is what's so beautiful. He, he washes us. To present us to himself. That, that is a powerful word right there. He washes me to present me to himself. It's his work. He's doing the washing. Hallelujah. So if I as a minister of the gospel just line myself up. Work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through me. He will do the work. He, all, all your job is to do is share and let God do the washing. You know, as ministers, yes, we use the word to wash, but even then you can't exert your own power. You can't be judging them and, and, you know, because you know, a situation that happened in the church or whatnot, or, or a situation that happened with, you know, one of the saints and, and they're not listening. They keep falling back into sin or whatever. You can't exert your own power through that. And, and begin to make judgment and, and these types of things. That's what he's talking about right here. It's God's job to wash them. It's God's job to convict them. The apostle Paul said, uh, you know, one waters, one, one waters, uh, one plants, one, uh, one sows, one waters, but it's God that, um, uh, gains the glory. It's God to get the harvest, but even in our planting and our sowing and our watering, Hallelujah. It's all God through us. Hallelujah. So he said in uh, 2 Corinthians that, that, that he said this treasure, the Holy Ghost, that we have the Holy Ghost in this earthen vessel. Hallelujah. Then he says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And I keep repeating that so you will get it. So I will get it. Hallelujah. He says, 
so um, in Matthew uh, 12, 33 through 37, um, uh, Jesus is talking about a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. And he says, uh, you make the tree good, it'll be good. And the fruit will be good. If you make the tree bad, it'll have evil fruit. Okay, so what is God doing here? God is making this vessel a, a, a vessel of, um, of, of sanctification and honor. So uh, he's cleansing us with the washing of the water of the word of God. And, um, you know, because we were all, we are all in the image of God. We were all in Genesis. The Bible says we are in, we are created in the image of God. First Corinthians 15 says, verse 45 through 49, I'm not reading the whole thing. It says, and as we have been born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So what the apostle Paul in that whole chapter, he's talking about, we were created in the image of God. And, and then he goes on down to say, and uh, uh, that uh, that basically in First Corinthians fifteen twenty two, for as in Adam all dies, uh, uh, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So in Genesis it says we're created in the image of God. It says then we um, then you know we spiritually died. He said in the day you eat thereof you will die. So we spiritually died. So then now we're in in First uh, Corinthians fifteen twenty two. The Apostle Paul saying. For as in Adam all died. We all died. We all died in our sin. Where The Bible says um, we are born in sin. Okay. So we know we're born in sin. We all died in sin. And he said, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. There it is. Uh, uh, all of us in Christ shall be made alive. So then in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, he says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made of a living soul. The last Adam, Christ, was made of a quickening spirit hallelujah an excellent spirit and that's what we're talking about the holy spirit so ephesians 2 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god hath before ordained that we should walk in them you know at one point the holy ghost began to reveal to me that um it's he showed me i was like on a um i don't know if you've ever seen like a uh, well, I'll, I'll just compare it with a potter's wheel, but it's a, 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 a lathe. And what a lathe does is you put a piece of wood on a lathe and you begin to, um, uh, with a knife, you get, begin to carve out as the lathe is spinning, um, you begin to carve out, chisel out this image, uh, whether it be a bowl, a cup, or whatever. And he was showing me in my spirit that that's what he's doing in me and that's what he's doing in you. He is... We are, and then that verse came to me, we are his workmanship, beloved. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. These good works are the works that he does through us, not us doing it, not us exerting our own power. Um, but um, going back to uh, chapter 23, I wanted to share that verse here. Um, he says um, it, uh, in verse 23, he says, in those days, Judah will be saved. Therefore, verse 7, therefore the days come. Uh, then, then he says in verse 8, but the Lord lives, brought, uh, brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north. And then, the, and then here's Jeremiah. He says, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. These are the ministry. All my bones shake. I'm like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome. He's just, he's just overcome. Because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Now listen to this verse. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. This right here is the verse that he's getting to in and that parallels with 2 Corinthians 4, 7, when it says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Even in the Old Testament ministry, he said, listen, for the land is full of adulterers. Number one, they have turned their back on God. Their hearts have went astray from God. Then he says, because of swearing, that word swearing is they're speaking in God's name, but it's not God speaking. Okay, 
And then he said the land mourns because it's not God speaking. And then it says the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. So the people are dried up, beloved. The wilderness, the pleasant places are dried up. And then he said their course is evil and their force is not right. See this, beloved? You got to get a hold of this right here. He's talking to the ministry. Even in the Old Testament, they, their course was evil and their force was not right. So what is he talking about? They were exerting their influence as the gifting of the ministry in them, they were exerting their own power over the people versus allowing the Holy Ghost to flow through them in transforming the people, you know? And so this is what he's talking about. He said, and this word has just kept resounding and their force is not right. And then he gave me this verse right here in second Corinthians that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, we need to understand that, that he said um, that, that um, gifts and callings are without repentance. Meaning, um, you don't have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior to have a gift and ability. He said, before you in your mother's womb, I created you, I ordained you. So you're created and ordained before you're ever born. Okay, so it's up to you and to your parents to birth that gift in the Holy Ghost through the teaching of the Word of God. But if that doesn't happen... That's why we have a lot of witches and witchcraft and sorcery. That's why we have a lot of, um, uh, what are they called, um, fortune tellers and people reading horoscopes. Some of them are actually gifted um, by the Lord, but they're using their gift, their force, their ability um, against the people to uh, trap them, to snare them. It's a, uh, even it's a, in the Old Testament, he said, I have nothing to do with witches, uh, sorcery, divination, uh, necromancing. Uh, I mean, the list goes on talking about people who read omens, that's oracles, uh, uh, what I was just talking about, people who read signs, the horoscopes, all of that. He said, don't have anything to do with that. And he said, because he said, Where I, the people I'm getting ready to drive out of the land, that's why I'm driving them out. They're doing these things. He said, but I, this is not what I'm calling you to. And he said, and I will not share my glory with another. And he, and he tells them here in Jeremiah 23, he said in verse 11, for both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. And then he goes on down, their way will be slippery. I mean, beloved, this is a serious issue in the house of God. And so he's saying to the psalmist, that's why the psalmist said, David, he said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew within me a right spirit. So we're created in, in Christ. We're his workmanship unto good works, uh, which God hath done before, before ordained, uh, that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, beloved, there's a plan and a purpose God already has for you. And he's already ordained you to do them. But the reason why we're not walking in it is because we're not allowing the workmanship of Christ. He's the potter. I'm the clay. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's the potter. And we're the clay. And the reason why we're not walking in the purpose and plan of God and we're not seeing that fruit of people being set free uh, is because of this. And so I just have three points here. His workmanship is he does the work. It's his power. Uh, uh, two, he, we're created in Christ. That's sanctification. That's his power. I, I want to keep putting his power because I can't cleanse myself. And when I get to a place where I'm getting frustrated with myself, I just go back to the Lord and I say, I, Lord, I see something here, but I don't know what it is. And I'm asking you to cleanse me. I'm asking you to heal me because sometimes I, it, when he's bringing stuff to the surface, it'll actually start kind of making me grieve within. Like a, it's a grieving and a groaning of the Holy Ghost to change me, to cleanse me, to rid myself of that. And, and beloved, see, people need to understand we, you and I have been born again by incorruptible seed of the word of God, correct? Correct. We've been born again. So the sanctification process is not about a condemnation because we might still be doing sin. 
It's not about that. This the the uh, the sanctification. Yeah, it is to rid us of sin, but it's not to condemn us because He knows where we at. He He knows where we are, when we are, where we are, how we are. He He knows all of it. He knows the person who is continuing to fall back down into drugs back into bondage. He knows the person who's fighting with self-righteousness like I have, and I'm coming out of that even uh, in, in processes in my mind. I have to still continue to work that out with God. Even this morning, there was something he was showing me. I said, okay, Lord, I see it. I don't know what it is, but I know that you're going to work this out in me. And so um, that's where I just put my trust in him, beloved, because it is his power working in me according to his power beloved and uh there's a verse there um it's not coming clear uh, through clearly but i uh it's it's according to the working of christ in me and so um so created in Christ, that's the sanctification. So what God is doing is, is cleansing us from the residue of that past sin life. There's a residue of thoughts, uh wrong motives, wrong thinking, um uh purposes things that we had in our mind when we were in sin and now we're in Christ. God is trying to wash all of that off, beloved. Gosh, if you could get it, if you could so get it. God, when God is cleansing us in that process, he is not condemning us. God told me one time, he said, daughter, when I'm correcting you, I'm not rejecting you. I'm only redirecting you. I'm getting you back on the path. I'm showing you my way is better. See, beloved, and then when the minute you come into agreement that his way is better and you renounce, the Bible says we have renounced the hidden things of darkness. Beloved, once we renounce that, we cut that off in the name of Jesus. We say, Lord, please help me. Man, it's power. So, you know, even when I first got born again, people were like, seem like you're growing and growing and growing. I'm like, man, I'm just in the word. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm just working it out with God. See, we can grow and go from glory to glory and level to level quicker than what we are. It's us. It's the devil. He's trying to make us feel condemned. He's trying to make us feel like God um, is condemning us. God, no, God is not condemning you. And God is not wanting you to do this by yourself. It's a, it's a working out. The Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So the sanctification process is his power. And the good works that he before ordained for us to walk in, that's the ministry, the good works. And that's also his power. That is not us exerting our own power. Okay. And so um, the sanctification process is what I want to talk about the next time we come on here. And, um, because I believe we've already been on here quite a bit, uh, quite a bit, but hallelujah, beloved. I, I just want to say thank you for coming on. Thank you for joining. And I just want to, um, say, uh, just, just leave you with this. The Bible says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He says in Ephesians chapter, um, uh, chapter 4, verse 22, he said that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. He said, and be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, he says, you got to get it right here. You put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. See, our old man is corrupted. And so what the Holy Spirit does is he washes and cleanses us with the word, helping us to put on the new man. Hallelujah. That is such a revelation. Praise God. Because John chapter 1 verse 12 says, what? It says um, that to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And right here he says, wherefore take unto you the whole uh, armor of God. I'm literally in a different place, but he says, hallelujah, that too. He says that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Beloved, he knows it's not in your heart anymore to sin. It, the Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible says that um, the, the heart above all is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So guess what? He put a new heart in us. He put a new heart of flesh in us. He knows that what he put in you. And one time the Lord told me, I said, Lord, I want to be pleasing in your sight. 
And he said, daughter, you are when you're walking in faith. And the word does say that it is impossible to please God without faith. For those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But right there in that moment when I said that to him and he said, daughter, you are. Uh, it's like I seen the faith of God. I seen the faith of Christ. And it was like God was saying, I know my own power, daughter. I know my own power and it has the ability to transform you. He said, I'm not doubting my power. You are. And so I pray today that we will get a hold of the faith of Christ, beloved. That you will get a hold of the faith of Christ. That you will say, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I want to walk in the faith that Christ walked in when he walked this earth. When Christ walked this earth, then he said, behold, I send the Holy Ghost. And guess what? He said, greater works. You and I will do greater works. Because number one, we're his children. Number two, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And that is the greater works. But he said he doesn't want this to be of us. He wants it to be of him. Amen? Amen. So, beloved, I, I'm, I'm glad you joined me for this Bible study this morning. Um, I want to thank you so very much um, because uh, we're, not, uh, we're not of the false prophet. We are of the Spirit of God. And um, the false prophet wants a quick word. They want a fast food word. We are of God, beloved. Amen. And so today, um, I just want to say thank you. And I want to go in prayer. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this word. It's so beautiful, God, that you said to put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Man, that is powerful. Thank you, Father, that we can put off the old man through the renewing of our mind. That's how we put off the old man is through the renewing of our mind, that, that we put on the new man through the renewing of our mind. That is so powerful, beloved. If we could just get it in our spirit, because there's been so much false doctrine, so much false teaching, you got to do this, you got to do that. You know, um, the, 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 the relationship with us and, and Christ is uh, we're not married to the law anymore. We're married to Christ. The law says, do this, do this, do this. But Christ says, do this, do this, do this greater. And then he says, I'm going to do it through you. I'm going to help you. That the power may be of God and not of us. Father, we just thank you. We just glorify your name. Thank you, Father, for your power and the power of your word and the power of your name. Lord, I thank you for your ministers of the gospel, Lord, that have watched and will watch this video, Lord. Help them to really get a hold of what you are doing. Help them to really get a hold of what you are doing in them and through them, Lord, so that we can... Um, um, allow your Holy Spirit to flow through us to help others, Lord, to preach the gospel, because really this is where your heart, if we were to ask you today, God, what is on your mind, you would say souls, people, people being delivered, people being set free, people being healed. And so, Father, we just want to say thank you so much for your teaching of your word of God. And Father, help us to follow, renounce all other doctrines and follow the doctrine of Christ. Follow the doctrine of Christ. Uh, he says that uh, he even said that his doctrine was from you. Father, we want to follow that doctrine. The, the full counsel, the Apostle Paul, he said, I have not, um, he said he didn't withhold um, sharing the full counsel of the word of God. Help us to not only receive the full counsel into ourselves, but also believe it and then also preach it. Hallelujah. And we just praise your holy name. We thank you for who you are. We bless your holy name. I will sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to 
be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised father we give glory to your name oh lord we give glory to your name oh lord for your name great and greatly to be praised and father for anyone who's watching father i pray forgiveness in their heart not only toward the ministers of the gospel that may have led them astray but also that if they have preached wrong if they have exerted their own power lord that you would give them that forgiveness in their heart toward their self to know that you forgive them that even when christ was on the cross and they gave him gall to drink that was him taking in the bitterness of the ministry within himself lord father heal your people heal your ministers heal your sons and daughters father we sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised thank you for watching please shit like and share this video and above all beloved have a beautiful day know that god is uh with you know that he will lead guide and direct yourself steps just only trust him beloved trust him say lord help me to transition my trust from me to you and he will do it. He will help you because he's been helping me every day to transitioning my trust off of man, off of myself, off of money, off of the world to him. Hallelujah. He loves you so very much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his sons and daughters his peace in Jesus name. Have a wonderful day, beloved. Hallelujah.